So what happens when you go ahead and introduce your laptop to a nice tasty drink? Well, if you have insurance on your laptop, you end up getting a new laptop for free. So, how did this happen, you might ask? Well, there's a little bit of a story behind that. Not really anything entertaining, but just goes to show what people are capable of doing. Apparently, if you want a new laptop and you have insurance on your current laptop, all you have to do is go ahead and quote-unquote accidentally spill a drink on it to kill it. Well, when I say quote-unquote, that's not what was done to this computer. And I'm not saying that because I diagnosed it and said, oh, well, this is obviously way more spill damage than is typically common on a laptop. Nope. This particular person actually admitted that, yes, they spilled soda. Actually, probably more accurately, poured soda on the laptop in order to kill it so that they could file a claim with the insurance company to get a new laptop. That's what happened to this thing. This is a computer that belonged to a friend of my friend at work. And that's what I found out. So, this is going to be interesting. I don't personally think there's any hope for this laptop whatsoever. This is a Pavilion G4, which aren't necessarily the best laptops to begin with. As you can see, the amount of liquid on this, and it is dry, by the way. This is or was a Pavilion G4 1050DX, and it's running, or was running, Windows 7. Now, I have extracted the battery from it, and when I say extracted, <laughs> I mean extracted. That sucker, you can see some of the spill damage on it there. It was definitely thoroughly soaked. Surprisingly, although I know this laptop's not going to turn on, <laughs> I don't need to try it to find out, the keys, not all the keys are stuck, which kind of surprised me. Some of them, like this B key, sound perfectly normal. The other ones are rather crunchy. Surprisingly, they do move, though. Function keys surprisingly move fairly well. They actually all work. All these up here seem to work. So, that one's not coming back up. Nor is that one. Those still work. Or at least they move anyway. So, I have a crazy idea. I'm going to clean this thing completely up. I'm going to see if there's any hope for being able to bring this poor little laptop back to life. Poor little laptop that served its owner flawlessly and was rewarded accordingly. So, I'm on a mission here, folks. But, the other point of this video I want to make is spill damaged laptops. This is obviously by far the worst I've ever seen. I've seen some doozies, but this this is definitely... This is impressive. This is impressive, I gotta say. If I can bring this back to life, then there's hope for all of them out there that legitimately get uh, spilled on. And, uh, I don't know. I have had a few laptops come in with spill damage. And some of it has been minor enough or the liquid spill got onto the motherboard in places where it didn't affect the, the functionality of the computer too much. Uh, a little bit of cleaning with a toothbrush and alcohol usually fixed whatever little issues they had. But that's probably maybe 20-30% of the laptops I've done this to that have actually ended up surviving. Typically the keyboard, while it will work, sometimes you just can't get all that gunk out of the keyboard no matter how much you run it under the sink or dishwash it. So sometimes the keyboard just has to be replaced and that's not too big of a deal considering that you can usually find these keyboards for 10 20 bucks on eBay but the job right now is to take this thing apart I actually think what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the LCD from the back cover the lid here 
I'm hoping as long as no liquid got into the display panel and usually it doesn't unless it wicks down all the way through the front bezel and, get, and wicks into the screen itself I've seen that happen once or twice but it's not too terribly common unless the entire laptop is drenched in a pool or something but no matter I'm gonna try to get the screen out of here and I'm probably going to run this entire laptop as it is right now assembled under the sink to at least clean off as much of the soda residue as I can get off of it before I go ahead and start actually disassembling it this will probably be a job for the dishwasher because I figure at this point it really doesn't matter what the method is of cleaning this thing is going to be the dishwasher is probably going to be a little bit better at trying to get the, the grime out of the keyboard um, and off the motherboard too but uh, I don't know we'll find out here so let's see what happens point out too that the uh, cord was obviously taken care of very well well I got the LCD panel out and you can see on the back side of it it's perfectly clean and on the inside of the uh, top cover here you can see that nothing got in there so that's a good sign the cables also free of uh, ick questions gonna be did any liquid get in between the glass and the metal frame right there and wick up into the screen in between the LCD panel itself and the diffusers that's gonna be the trick I don't think it did I think this is going to be okay so if nothing else I got a working panel I'm pretty sure of it but we'll find out this is an LED panel LG panel there's the part number there LG makes pretty good panels I don't really have too much complaint about these even though HP pavilions are not really what I would consider top the line laptops or even half as good as most of them out there it's interesting that they use LG panels pretty high quality panel so now I think it's time to just go ahead and run this whole thing under the sink and clean it up because frankly it's just way too much stickiness to clean with Windex and a towel. So here we go. Well, I'm going to give this thing a good soaking in the sink here. I'm going to soap it up with some Ajax with a zesty scent of lemon. I'm also going to go ahead and flood this thing with some water here, try to clean out whatever's in it. Try to be gentle with this part. I don't want to rip off any of the keys. Let's go over it again here a little bit. Of course, some of the stickers may end up becoming victims of the uh, soap here, but uh, I guess that's a small price to pay. Now, I'm not trying to get all the soap out of this because I know that's not going to be possible, but <clears throat> at least right now. This is just to get it cleaned up enough so I can get it apart and uh, kind of do a little bit more inspection on it and then probably throw it in the dishwasher. My anticipation is this will probably be fixable but not without putting a new motherboard in it, possibly a new keyboard and I don't know if, you know, if I get those parts cheap enough off eBay it might be worth it but I don't know, we'll see. I'll be just interested to see what the uh, motherboard looks like with that battery sitting in there with all that uh, liquid spill damage on it. So, Final wipe down with a little bit of Invisiglass and a fresh towel. Can't even tell that screen ever got spilled on. Alright, I got in the hard drive cleaned up. I took the circuit board off and it appeared that nothing got in between the uh, aluminum case and the uh, <coughs> board itself onto any of the chips. So. We're going to go ahead and plug this in and uh, just give it a quick test, I think, here. Might be surprising to see what happens at the very least. There we go. We have spin up. And there's no unusual sounds coming from the drive. So let's see. 
we can get it to uh, I can get my SATA cable out of here out of the computer here all right let's see if the system sees the hard drive ah, I hear it a bing and we do in fact have data look at that yep And we do have our recovery partition intact. And looks, so it looks to me like 2008-13. Hmm. All right, well, it looks like we got a working uh, hard drive here. Let's see what this guy had for his uh, iTunes library here. Did he have anything interesting under here? Killing Season 3. Music, and eh, not that much in there. So, at least one of the parts works. Well, I was rather expecting a bit of a horse show under this uh, palm rest cover here. I'm actually surprised there's still as much as there is on here, given the fact that I just flushed this thing out with water. But uh, maybe there's not a whole lot that got into it. I don't know. I kind of doubt that, though. There's some definite fuzzing going on in some of these places. So I don't have a whole lot of hope. But we'll just continue with this. If nothing else, you know, there's some parts here that I could use or resell. And here's a quick shot under the motherboard. Of course, I already flushed a lot of this out. You can see some that didn't come out of there. So we're getting down there. This doesn't look too terribly bad. The question is, what's this going to be like, the touchpad? I'm going to take that apart, too. The curious thing is, I actually may actually have a motherboard for this already. Because I have this exact same motherboard at work. I think it's the same motherboard. And if it is the same motherboard, there's only one little component that's broken on it. And I think it's a ferrite choke coil that's broke on it. Other than that, the motherboard does work. I'm going to have to see if it's the same board or not. But either way, we're going to see if this motherboard works. Well, the next day, here's the motherboard. Got it dried. I'm pretty sure it's dried. and sitting for about a day now. Went ahead and spritzed it with some electrical contact cleaner and wiped it down. I haven't cleaned the uh, fan or the heat sink yet, but uh, it's not really too terribly bad. So the fan's not stuck. So this is just the initial test. Uh, it's got one of the two sticks of memory in it. I got the uh, AC adapter plugged into it there, the uh, board here going into the plug right there. So I'm kind of curious to see what happens. Will it come up? Will it light the uh, jack right here? Will the power button come on and light up? These are all questions we're getting ready to find out. I took this out of the uh, top case. I find it easier to do it this way, to remove the power button from the top case instead of trying to get the top case on here and get it in the right place and you know put it in the, the, the latching socket right there. It's just much easier to take that one little tiny screw out, just do it this way. So here we go. I've got the uh, power supply powered up. Let's see what happens here. And we have a light. fans running. Well, that's more than I thought was going to happen with this thing. Of course, I don't have the screen in it yet. I might try hooking up the uh, external monitor there to it, but sometimes these laptops, even if you take the LCD out, they don't default to the external monitor. Some do, but some don't. So I'm going to plug the uh, LCD in here and we'll try this again. 
Well, still no go. <clears throat> Not really like that's unexpected, of course. One of the things you can tell from something like this, and this is something that you can do with pretty much any motherboard, frankly, that's uh, not working, not turning on, whatever, is you can feel the processors, the north bridge, the south bridge, the main CPU itself, whatever you have, and see if there's any appreciable heat buildup on it. Now, I actually have this on right now, and there is absolutely no heat coming out of the core of that processor. So either the processor is not being fed any power, or I think this is highly unlikely that the processor would be fried and be totally cold, <clears throat> but I suppose it's possible. Well, I was able to uh, confirm that there is power getting to the processor on this side of the motherboard and on the other side of the board as well. So I'm not entirely certain yet why the processor itself is not getting uh, hot. After about 10 or 15 minutes of being on, there is a very slight amount of warmth to this, but nothing nothing like it should be, that's for sure. So I don't know if the cores are at rest right now and not physically energized, and that's why it's not getting hot. Possibly there's a fault somewhere else over here in the north bridge. I believe this is the BIOS chip down here. I took that uh, battery off of there and cleaned it up under there a little bit but that didn't help it so I'm going to go ahead and throw this thing in the dishwasher I'm guessing if there's any possible chance that there might be some stuff still in the motherboard it's going to be under the BG uh, chips right here ball grid chips or ball grid array if you want to be technical about it anyway they're a heck of a ball in good time <laughs> That's for sure. But anyway, if there's any kind of crud under here still left, um, I may not have been able to get that completely out of there by just simply uh, hand washing this with the brush. So I'm going to pull the processor out of here. Throw it in a dishwasher. I did notice that there is still a little bit of gunk right there, which makes me think that there might still be gunk somewhere else I can't see. So... I don't know, but like I said, none of the components are going thermal nuclear, so... And since I've got voltage to the processor, it really doesn't make sense why there is no life, other than there's still crud under the uh, BGA chips, unless they've just completely bit the dust. I don't know. Well, after a couple days of screwing with this thing, just to see what would happen... The motherboard has been ruled to be dead. Although I do have a question about whether or not this board was actually any good or not before the quote-unquote spill damage occurred. Given the fact that these G4s and G6s and G7s like to pop their motherboards pretty easily. I don't know. It may have, been, may have actually been dead with prior to uh, the spill damage. I'm not entirely certain. Taking a look at the hard drive a little bit closer, it looked like this computer hadn't even been used for a few months, so... I'm not really certain about that, but uh, anyway, I was just kind of curious to see if there was any way to get this thing back up and running, and no, there wasn't, so I'm kind of thinking that uh, even though this motherboard and everything is dead in this computer, the screen is probably good, although I can't test it, unfortunately. Maybe I can find a computer at work to test it with, and I may go, and hit, go ahead and do that. Um, even this, even in this laptop's current state, <clears throat> it's still worth something. I can resell this on eBay for probably about you know fifty to seventy bucks. I'm guessing. I looked up this board on eBay just to see what it was going for, and then I looked up how much the, these particular G4 laptops that actually work go for. And let's say the cost to replace the motherboard is well equal to or more than what these things go for in a functional state so in that case it's obviously not worth even trying to fix this with a new motherboard and possibly have to replace the keyboard as well in it so I just sell it as is. I'll probably stick another 2 gig of RAM in it just to sweeten the deal a little bit. I'll also go ahead and uh, wipe out the hard drive and uh, things like that but um, yeah these motherboards have the dreaded uh, BGA syndrome problem where so many of them fail. 
and looking up this motherboard on eBay, there are several of them on there that were failed, and there were several repair services replacing with an upgraded uh, BGA uh, chipset on these motherboards. So it is a common problem with these things. I've seen it many times come in the store, these things fail. So it's hard to say for certain whether or not this motherboard was actually dead before, you know, like I said, the spill damage occurred. So anyway, that will conclude this video. Take care, everyone.